Hey, all you people, what's going on? Today, we're gonna do an overview of what we've done to this fourth gen Toyota 4Runner so far. If you like what you see here and on the channel in general, consider hitting subscribe and the like button because I'll be posting updates to the 4Runner. I'll be posting updates to the GTI and other stupid car stuff to keep you guys entertained. A little overview of this fourth gen. It's a 2006 Sport Edition with the TUZ FE 4.7 liter V8 engine. And currently it's at about 156,000 miles. So this is actually my girlfriend's 4Runner. I have 4Runner in my blood. So I've become a little invested in her 4Runner. Now we have taken it on a few trips so far, one very long trip and a couple others that were local. At the end of this video, I'm gonna throw in a couple of those clips. We sort of converted the back of this thing into a, an overlanding rig. So what have we done so far? Well, as you may notice, the step rails are no longer on the sides. I actually think it looks really cool this way, but we like the convenience of having step rails when we're loading and unloading stuff off the roof. The reason why we took them off is because it had this kind of crappy, almost plasty dip finish from the factory. It was worn, it was chipping off, it was peeling. So we sanded this entire thing down and we are going to spray this with a sort of rhino liner, a bed liner, if you will. So it's rust -Oleum truck bed coating. We actually tested this out on a couple other parts of the 4Runner. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but this uh, sort of skid plate for the cargo area, it has a very nice textured finish to it and it has abrasion resistance. So if you're loading stuff, it's not gonna get super scratched. We also use this on the roof rails here. Over time, the sun and the elements were fading this. We cover this entire thing with trash bags, taped it off. Have a nice fine paint edge here. Unfortunately, I got a little excited and did some overspray here. Not super, super expensive. I think it's like $8 a can. Second thing we did to the appearance was Plasti Dip and what it is is basically just a rubberized kind of matte finished coating. There's actually other other colors you can get. What a lot of people do, they they plasti dip wheels, uh, emblems alongside the step rails. These emblems were also fading and peeling. Tape these off, gave them you know seven or eight coatings of the plasti dip, and then the excess stuff just peeled right off. It is so satisfying to do. <laughs> it made us want to look for more things to Plasti Dip because it's so much fun. The Toyota emblem came out really good. Forerunner and Toyota. We're gonna do something with the windshield wipers here. And I know some people Plasti Dip the entire grill here. Sam mentioned just doing the emblem in the middle, but I think that might look a little strange just having like a black hole right here in the middle of the grill. The most labor intensive thing we did so far though was the chassis paint. Chassis saver. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but this stuff is no joke. Oh my God. Um, we got it in our hair. One of my gloves broke and it got on my finger and it stayed on my finger for about a month. So if you ever do this, take precautions, double glove if you have to, long impermeable sleeves, no joke. Along with the chassis saver, I don't know how much this did, but it was worth a shot. I um, I took this Evaporos. This is actually pretty expensive too. I think it was like 40 bucks for this bottle and I took my fluid pump and actually I taped off these drain holes in the frame here and then pumped the anti-rust into the frame to hopefully stop some of the internal rust on the frame. While we're down here, why don't we just talk about the rest of the stuff I did. These sway bar bushings were very worn out. So we've got these new poly bushings here with a little service tab here that you can grease up. Uh, funny story about this, I'm not really that funny, but uh, I should have used an impact wrench for this to get the sway bar bolts off here and it snapped off both these bolts inside of the frame because it was very rusted. So I had to get creative and <laughs> I got two U-bolts here um, and clamped them down over the frame. Knock on wood, it hasn't failed yet. I also serviced all of the U-joints. And then after that, changed all the gear oil. <laughs> AMS oil, severe gear, uh, 75W90. Read some good reviews on this stuff and wasn't sure if we'd be towing in the future, but I wanted to be safe. See these transmission lines here that run from the tranny to the radiator. Um, their job is to make sure that the transmission stays cool under load. They rotted out pretty bad. Um, so it was just leaking transmission fluid. The truck ended up going into limp mode to protect itself. I had to order these from Toyota. The same exact thing actually happened to my 07. So I'm surprised this problem isn't talked about more. Change the transmission filter, 
which I used this stuff shown to me by Eric the car guy. Cool. What's nice is that after changing all the fluids, we've been able to lock the center differential, which previously wasn't able to be locked. Unfortunately, it still doesn't have four low. So just a tip for all you out there with fourth gens, it's good every now and again just to switch it into four, into four low, lock the center diff. Uh, just gets all that stuff moving and it keeps it from getting stuck. And then the front right wheel bearing started to go and that noise accentuated once I put it up on the jack stands. And while I was doing the wheel bearing, I went around and greased all the calipers uh, because this caliper was sticking a little bit. I actually got these new snap on uh, flaps and same with on the other side too. And it helps prevent the water and dirt from splashing up into the engine bay. I also deleted that terribly stupid charcoal filter in the air box. Now I've got a little bit better throttle response. And finally, we tore off the old rusty crusty skid plate along with the old rubber splash guard. Um, <laughs> it is covered in leaves. That ain't gonna be doing much if a rock tries to puncture that. So we ordered a wonderful skid plate from RCI here. This thing is the real deal. It is very heavy. Um, I forget what gauge steel this is, but it's literally bulletproof. Listen. It reminds me of that scene in Back to the Future Part 3 where Marty wears the cast iron stove door on his chest and gets shot. <laughs> and he's fine. Unfortunate thing about this is that uh, one of the old bolts from the skid plate broke off where it mounts on the subframe there. And then I tried to use an extractor set from Bosch and I broke the extractor set inside of that bolt. So I don't know, I've been trying to figure that out. If you have any tips, let me know because we want to get that skid plate on before winter. So for the most part, that stuff is just pure maintenance related stuff that need to get done. But we still have a few more things planned for the Forerunner. There's a couple dents and a couple scratches that we need to address as well as these oxidizing headlamps. The salty climate and harsh winters of New England can seriously do a number on your car up here. So you can also see that these alloy wheels are starting to oxidize, and I'm not quite sure what to do with them in the future. I've been researching tire wheel setups, but along with that, if you go with a larger diameter tire with a thicker sidewall, you're gonna have some rubbing issues. And that brings us to the ride height of this car. Very common upgrade for the fourth gens. They are heavily raked from the factory. It's like an inch and a half to two inches less wheel gap in the front than in the rear. The suspension does need a refresh. So we've been looking to some Bilstein, Bilstein, Bilstein lift kits for the car on the less expensive end of it, of course, which would easily address the ride height and the ride quality issue. On that note, we would also be replacing this X-Ray's oil vectoring system here, which I guarantee would be the next thing to break underneath this. We want to get some sort of cargo rack for the top. Sam and I love the aggressive look of that. And finally, the biggest undertaking of getting this whole thing sorted out would be the infamous cracked exhaust headers on TZFE. So that's going to have to change. We've been looking into the Doug Thorley long tube headers Heard great things about the quality of those, and we'd probably just go catless. So as of now, that is that. I'll keep you all updated on this thing because it's definitely worth the time, money, and energy to get this thing sorted out. And now I will leave you with some video clips of failed adventures in the past. Enjoy those. Shaboom. Shaboom. Bob, I don't know what, what could be better than this right here. I just want to say that like, my bathing suit shrunk or something because it doesn't fit me. Oh. So what I just realized is that I accidentally went into the waves with my phone in my pocket. If you guys don't see any of the footage that I took on my phone, 
that's the reason why. <laughs> oh man, we are sunburned. So there's gonna be a tropical storm. It's gonna hit basically right where we were gonna go off roading, so. Maybe get a hotel tomorrow night? Maybe, because we deserve it after all this upset. This curtain's nice because no one can see in from the front and our front is facing the entrance of Walmart. We have a weighted blanket here as well, but we have not needed that. <laughs> uh, we were debating taking it. <laughs> that was like this joke. I was like, should we take that weighted blanket? And Matt's like, uh, I was like, oh no, is it, or is it gonna lower the gas mileage? And he's like, you're not serious, are you? And I was like, maybe. <laughs> it's a 17 pound blanket. I mean, literally we bought over 17 pounds of alcohol down here. Yeah, actually though. Hi, we have a reservation for 12 o'clock today and we would like to cancel because of the storm. Also, we booked a hotel at Myrtle Beach. The hotel itself is nice, but the residents are anything but model citizens. It's raining and it's kind of chilly. Hey, do you guys want to know an awesome way to look skinnier on the beach? Because I do too. Yeah! <laughs> So, as far as road tripping goes, I wanted to show you guys this um, because a lot of the times we do off-roading um, and we go on the beach and we have to air down our tires. So, I decided to pick up one of these DeWalt compressors slash air mattress pump. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it was slightly expensive. I think it was about a hundred bucks but it comes with a car adapter and it also takes other DeWalt 20 volt batteries here. Feels well built. It's got a flashlight. Um, you set it to a certain PSI and then it fills your tire up and just stops when it reaches there. And like I said, it also has an air mattress pump, which is super handy because we always pump up the air mattress in the back of this to sleep on. And I have topped off all of the tires on these cars um, with a single battery, so. Totally recommend this. I will link to it in the description below. Super handy to have. If you haven't yet watched the comparison between the fourth gen and the third gen I did, click on this pop-up banner up here. It'll take you to that. And definitely keep an eye out for more videos on the 4Runner, guys. We have a lot of cars in here. Oh.